All right, we're going to get started. There's still more seats if anybody would like a seat. I want to say welcome to everybody here. A huge welcome. It's nice to see people hugging and saying hi. We've returned to gather here in this beautiful setting to remember the people who were taken from us five years ago. We're gathered here to appreciate the people we have with us. We say the names of the 11 individuals who came together as three distinct Jewish communities with a similar purpose to worship every Saturday. As we mark the passing of time, five years feels both so long and also so recent. Consistently, we all stand with their families to ensure that their memories continue to be a blessing. This year, as we saw the trial unfold and with it, the opportunity to better know the many of our neighbors who testified with heart and conviction, our survivors and our first responders, we honor the courage involved to tell the full story of October 27th, 2018. We recognize those who survived the attack and who would dutifully and joyfully join with the 11 victims to create a worship space on Saturday mornings. We appreciate the really brave responders who saved lives and brought the highest standards to their profession. And we all stand here together because we remember that we are stronger together that we have a city with religious and secular leaders who loudly stated that anti-Semitism does not have a place in Pittsburgh on 1027. I'm Maggie Feinstein, and I'm the director of the 1027 Healing Partnership. It's with honor that our organization works with incredible group, <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> no, no applause necessary. Um, that our, that our organization works with an incredible group of community members to hold the space of commemorating this date on both the secular and the Hebrew date. In addition, we continue coordinating ongoing community resiliency efforts following the shooting. In this role, we seek to be partners on the long and winding road of healing. And in this spirit, I would like to say that at this five-year mark, it may take a little extra effort for people to be fully present given what's going on in the world. But I hope you can take a second to breathe in this wonderful city park where we stand as neighbors, carriers of the legacy of October 27th, as well as the future of this city. I urge everyone to remember that five years ago, when our city faced a crisis, we had each other to lean on and build a healing path. And today, we hold this memory as there are more crises around us. The messy work of community building can only happen one day at a time when we can see and care for each other, when we can love like the boys, two people who chose to see the good in every person they encountered. In remembering our 11, we remember and reflect in spirit and action. We take this moment to recognize this day's significance within all of our own sense of self. Because when you find healthy ways to identify with and belong to a significant moment in our collective history, we can see that it actually connects us all. People do this individually or in communal ways. Caring neighbors have volunteered with Repair the World to remember with action. At sites, people packed hygiene supplies. They created caring crafts to share from one hand to another, many of which you might have seen on the road down here. They advocated for change. They'll donate blood. They'll clean cemeteries. And you can join in action. Our local schools took time to impart both the joy and responsibility of understanding our past in profound ways, seen today by thoughtful artwork and with the presence of many of our future leaders of this city who welcomed us as student ambassadors. But many more reflected in spirit today through study sessions about Torah and Jewish learning. Teachers joined from around the world to bring perspectives this morning. And next week for the yard site, we will see an in-person opportunity to study the words of our faith tradition. We bless and guard the memories of those who have come before us by telling the story. We bless in memory the, the memories of those who came before us by telling the stories to those who come after. Thank you to everybody who is here today. I especially want to thank all of the community leaders and public officials who have continued to elevate the memories of the 11 community members taken in our community when it was attacked. So thank you all for being here. 
I'd now like to invite the families and friends designated to light candles to please come up. We'll light a candle for each of the 11. We say their names, we hold their memories for a blessing. Joyce Feinberg. Richard Gottfried. Rose Malinger. Jerry Rabinowitz. Cecil and David Rosenthal. Bernice and Sylvan Simon. Dan Stein. <laughs> Irving Younger.
in Melvin Wax. Thank you all. And invite up Rabbi Myers. I will now recite the memorial prayer, first in Hebrew and then in English. If you're able to rise, please do so. Yosef ben Chaim, Rezal bat Avraham, Yehuda ben Yechezkel, Sesel Chaim ben Eliezer, David ben Eliezer, Berachel bat Moshe, Zalman Shachna ben Menachem Mendel, Daniel Avraham ben Baruch, Yitzchak Chaim ben Menachem, Moshe Gadol ben Yosef, Shenehragu Akidosh Hashem. Bavu Shiyanu mit Palali. Liloi nishmotem Uzhar landu akedatam Betamod landu Ulechol Yisrael Zichutam Eretz atichazitam we all ye him a com, Liza Akatam. And a pal Raham ye him. Has the rain be Satan can affect all your lamim. With the roar, be sroar Hayim at Nishmotem. Adonai, oh, nakalatam. We can eat them, the heimen nukatam. We am do, le koralam, le ketsayamin. We no mar. God full of mercy, who dwells on high. Establish proper rest upon the wings of the divine presence, on the levels of the holy and pure ones, 
who shine like the splendor of the firmament for the souls of the Kedoshim of Pittsburgh, Joyce Feinberg, Richard Gottfried, Rose Malinger, Jerry Rabinowitz, Cecil Rosenthal, David Rosenthal, Bernice Simon, Sylvan Simon, Dan Stein, Mel Wax, Irv Younger, murdered Al-Kiddush Hashem because we pray for the elevation of their souls and remember for us their sacrifice and let their merit stand for us and for all of Israel. Let the earth not cover their blood and let there not be a place sufficient for their cries. Master of mercy, cover them in the cover of your wings forever and bind their souls with the binding of life. God is their inheritance. May their rest be in Gan Eden and let them rest in peace upon their places of repose and let them stand for their fate in the end of days. And let us say, Amen. And you can be seated. Thank you, Rabbi Myers. That was incredibly beautiful and really moving. The prayer for the souls that de- of the, the soul of the departed is one that inspires courage with our sorrow. I'm going to invite up Alan Hausman next. If I could ask all of our first responders that are here with us today to join us in front of the stage or up with us here. With me here, our representative of our first responders. Our county 911 call takers receive thousands of calls of service and immediately transfer them to dispatchers who make sure the correct resources are sent to assist wherever needed. Emergency management personnel are continually updating plans and preparations for all situations. They work to make sure there are no unmet needs. Law enforcement officers from the city of Pittsburgh and all around respond to all types of calls from simple parking complaints to much more serious requests. In all cases, they show professionalism and compassion to the public. Emergency medical service paramedics and EMTs work around the clock to help anyone with a medical need. Sometimes people just need a little help and EMS personnel are always ready to assist no matter what the need is. Firefighters don't just fight fires. They provide medical care and any assistance they are called to offer. We have some other first responders here that we usually don't recognize. We have our park rangers who patrol our parks offer training, and assist wildlife. Our public works and parks personnel are busy working around the park, making sure it's clean, making sure everything's taken care of for us. And our special event staff organizes and coordinates all special events throughout the city. Mahatma Gandhi said, service can have no meaning unless one takes pleasure in it. When it is done for show or for fear of public opinion, 
It stunts the person and crushes their spirit. All of these people here today do this for the reason that it is intended. They are not in it for personal praise and they are not in it for personal gain. I am proud to work alongside these people every day. As you leave today, please take a moment and thank a first responder. Thank you, Alan. We draw inspiration, especially this year, by the commitment of the next generation to continue to make the memories of the 11 a blessing in their communities. You all saw this along the road, and now we're going to welcome up a youth choir, or sorry, a youth quintet to come play, and I'm going to ask Representative Frankel to introduce the instruments they're on. The Violins of Hope exhibit relates remarkable stories of string instruments played by Jewish musicians during the Holocaust. Each surviving instrument has a unique and inspiring story that connects both young and old to the history of the Holocaust in a deeply emotional, personal, and relatable way. Paralleling lessons of the past to present day issues is key to creating a future where diversity, equality, and inclusion are valued. We welcome the youth quintet led by Pierce Cook to play these special instruments in the ceremony today. As you listen, let yourself think about the many hands these instruments have passed through, and then the loving care it took to refurbish them, and feel that each instrument has a unique emotional history that tells a story of perseverance and hope. The group is directed by Pierce Cook, the violin, Arden Kingston, Amelia Duncan, the viola, Greta Coleman, cello, William Coleman, and the bass, bass by Matthew Coleman. The Prayer of the Children is a choral work composed by Kurt Bester in the late 1980s as the composer reflected on the Yugoslavian Civil War. Having delivered hope and comfort to those in crisis for decades, this piece was arranged for string orchestra in 2021. The lyrics in Prayer of the Children evoke the fear that many people live in today, especially those on the receiving end of prejudice and hate. An excerpt from the piece reads, can you feel the hearts of the children aching for home, for something of their very own? reaching hands with nothing to hold on to, but hope for a better day. Crying softly help me to feel the love again in my own land. This performance is dedicated to the 11 victims of the Tree of Life shooting and their families, and to each and every one of us charging us to build a better world for our children. Our musicians are wearing green accents today, one of the primary colors of hope. Following the performance of Prayer of the Children, our musicians will perform Havitka, which translates to the hope, reminding us to honor the lives lost five years ago today by working tirelessly towards a better future.
Thank you so much. You guys were beautiful. Dor Hadash, New Light, and Tree of Life all remember the members of their congregation who were taken that day in unique ways, but they also remember the shared commitment of each one of the 11 together. So three distinct congregations were worshiping in their own unique ways, but though with the same foundation and the same purpose. So thank you to these congregations for representing your congregations today in recognition of your uniqueness and your shared commitment. Thank you. Every minute someone leaves the world behind we are all in the line without knowing it. We never know how many people are before us. We cannot move to the back of the line. We cannot step out of the line. We cannot avoid the line. So while we wait in line, make the moments count, make priorities, Make the time, make your gifts known. Make a nobody feel like a somebody. Make your voice heard, make the small things big, make someone smile. Make the change, make love, make up, make peace. Make sure to tell your people they are loved. Make sure you have no regrets. Make sure you are ready. Thank you for that beautiful poem. I'm going to welcome up Rabbi Amy Bardak and Gordy Felt to give us some perspective on the healing journey. This is a traditional prayer for healing. Misha Bera Havotenu Avraham Yitzhak Vayako Vimotenu Sara Rivkarachel Valea Uyivarech Vayera Pe et Hacholim Hakadosh Baruch Hu Yimale Rachamim Alehem Lahachazikam Lurapotam Vishlach Lehem Era Rifua Shlema Rifuata Nefesh Rifuata Guf Hashda Bagalav Yisman Kariv, Vinomar Amen. May the one who blessed those who came before us, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, Sarah, Rebecca, Rachel, and Leah, bless and heal all those who are ill and suffering, those who are still recovering physically from their wounds five years ago, those still recovering spiritually from their emotional wounds, and all those in our lives who are suffering today from injury and illness, those near and far, those whose names we know and those whose names we don't. May the Holy One bring mercy upon them, strengthen them, and heal them. May God send quickly complete healing of body and spirit along with all those who suffer, and let us say, Amen. I stand before you this afternoon, a member of the Flight 93 National Memorial Partnership, with great humility and compassion, as well as a deep sense of respect. For a while, I cannot say to you that I understand your experience or your loss, I can stand with you in solidarity and commit to honor and remember those that perished on this day five years ago, as well as those so deeply affected by the violence of October 27, 2018. Trauma and loss 
can be complex, experienced differently and in a deeply personal manner by those that walk the path forced upon us by violence. Tragedy can steal away the pure essence of who we are and send us on a trajectory that diminishes ourselves and the memories of our loved ones unless we find a way forward through the fog and terror of what has passed. We cannot move on in our lives if we are to survive tragedy because there is no moving on or forgetting. But rather, we must move forward and in doing so continue to mourn the loss of lives not lived to their full potential, yet at the same time cherish the actions and the lives that were lived, making your loved ones truly unique. We do not want to forget the pain and anguish of loss. Those emotions bind us to our loved ones and ourselves and remind us of what was. At Flight 93, the reading of names plays a significant role in our September 11th service as we remember and honor our loved ones, just as you have done so today. We acknowledge the humanity of those we lost. We renew our passion to carry their spirits in our heart and gather strength for the journey forward. So with your permission and with my enduring respect, I will further bind our two communities by reciting the first names of those extraordinary 11. Rose, Jerry, Cecil and David, Daniel, Richard, Joyce, Melvin, Bernice and Sylvan, Irving. And finally, let me take a moment to remind you, as you move forward on your life's journey, please never forget that you are loved. You have a beautiful community surrounding you, and you are not alone. Lean on each other, support each other, celebrate and share your memories. If we all commit to moving forward together, the essence of these 11 souls will continue to live in our hearts. Thank you so much for joining with our community today, Gordy, and sharing these thoughts of healing in body and spirit with your perspective you've gained over your hard work in the last 22 years. Amy and Gordy, your leadership has brought visibility and cohesion to peers and inspires our community. Over the last five years, we've seen faith leaders take an active stand of solidarity with their neighbors, and we have been so grateful. Last Sunday evening, Bishop Zubik hosted an ecumenical service at St. Paul's Cathedral to mark the date. Now, we want to welcome up Rabbi Ron Simon and Reverend Liddy Barlow, and we thank you for your leadership five years ago, creating a space for our faith leaders to show their leadership in the moment of need. So thank you. On this sacred and liminal day, we stand together as spiritual siblings, looking back on these past five years, considering our learning, cherishing times of joy, and remembering moments of challenge. On this tender and poignant day, we stand together as interfaith bridge builders, representing so many partners across the faith community continuing to mourn our neighbors who died for no other reason than their Jewish faith and their commitment to building a better world. 
And so on this holy and reflective day, we hope for even more, even more bridge building as we look ahead to better times. Both our Jewish and Christian traditions look forward beyond the bounds of human sight to a day when all things will be reconciled and made new. In the Christian tradition, we yearn for the kingdom of God, inaugurated but not yet fulfilled. And in the Jewish tradition, we look to Olam Haba, the world to come, the world yet to be. Since its publication in 1979, Judy Chicago's poem, Merger, has been adopted by many as a beloved glimpse of that vision. So today we share that poem and our own hopes for a better Pittsburgh. And then all that has been divided, all that has divided us will merge. And then Pittsburgh's 91 neighborhoods will understand that what happens in one neighborhood impacts 90 others. And then compassion will be wedded to power. And then those for whom Pittsburgh is most livable will share the resources needed to uplift us all. And then softness will come to a world that is harsh and unkind. And then Pittsburgh's Pittsburghers will approach each other with kindness that comes from deep inside. And then both men and women will be gentle and then Pittsburghers of all genders will be treated with gentleness. And then both women and men will be strong. And then all Pittsburghers will find strength from one another. And then no person will be subject to another's will. And then every Pittsburgher will have equal access to opportunity. And then all will be rich and free and varied. And then all varied Pittsburghers will know a richness of spirit within, free to worship, without fear of hate. And then the greed of some will give way to the needs of many. And then all Pittsburghers will be afforded the respect of just being a human being. And then all will share equally in Earth's abundance. And then Pittsburghers across our neighborhoods will enjoy the beauty of God's green earth. And then all will care for the sick and the weak and the old. And then all of us in Pittsburgh will be committed to the words of the psalmist, do not cast me away in my old age. And then all will nourish the young. And then we will see all Pittsburgh's children as our children. And then all will cherish life's creatures. And then every Pittsburgher will be valued as created in God's image. And then everywhere will be called Eden once again. May it be so, and may we make it so, here, here in, in Pittsburgh, Pittsburgh and, and across, across the world, world with God's blessing, we, we must do all of this together. together. Thank you. I'm going to welcome up now those who were present on 10-27-18 and were able to make it out safely. And we continue to lead their congregations and they inspire our community. So thank you for standing here today together. A poem, give us strength. As we gather today, we pray for courage and for strength. When we remember the evils in the past, we are almost afraid to make ourselves remember, but we are even more afraid to forget. We ask for wisdom that we might mourn and not be consumed by hatred, that we might remember and yet not lose hope. We must face evil, and in so doing, reaffirm our faith in future good. We cannot erase yesterday's pains, 
but we can vow that they will not have been suffered in vain. And so we pray for those who were given death, let us choose life for us and for generations yet to come. We must teach ourselves and our children to learn from hate that we must love, to learn from evil to live for good. Thank you, and I'm gonna ask up some of our executives from the state level, the city level, and the county level. So Governor Shapiro, Mayor Ganey, County Executive Fitzgerald, to please join me. Our God and God of our ancestors, with mercy, accept our prayer on behalf of our country and its government. Pour out your blessings upon this land, upon its inhabitants, upon its leaders, its judges, officers, and officials who faithfully devote themselves to the needs of the public. Help them understand the rules of justice you have decreed so that peace and security, happiness and freedom will never depart from our land. Adonai, God whose spirit is in all creatures, we pray that your spirit be awakened with all, within all the inhabitants of our land. Uproot from our hearts hatred and malice, jealousy and strife. Plant love and companionship, peace and friendship among the many peoples and faiths who dwell in our nation. Grant us the knowledge to judge justly, the wisdom to act with compassion, and the understanding and courage to root out poverty from our land. May it be your will that our land be a blessing to all who dwell on earth. And may your cause all people to dwell in friendship and in freedom. Speedily fulfill the vision of your prophets. Nations shall not lift up swords against other nations. Neither shall they lean war anymore. For all of them, from the least of them, to the greatest shall now the, shall now the, shall know thy name, and in all say, Amen. On this day, we remember the sense of safety and security that came to our community in the face of something so violent. So, as we had civic leaders that unequivocally showed their stance against anti-Semitism and for the protection and safety of the Jewish community. We thank you. We value the immense significance of this. We're also grateful to have the Clarion Quartet here to play The Violins of Hope. I'm going to ask Representative Frankel to come back up and introduce the next piece. The Violins of Hope are both played as we see here today, and have an accompanying exhibit housed on Carnegie Mellon University's campus. It is open free to the public until November 21st, 2023 and see, and at CMU. Individuals can experience the ex exhibit on their own or be guided by a trained docent. The Weinstein family of Tel Aviv bought and preserved each and every instrument because of them a violin was above war and evil. The wor this work gives us the opportunity to see and hear the instruments that have, been, have seen evil and destruction, as well as joy and hope for the future. After 50 years, these silent instruments came back to life. There are now they are now extraordinary instruments that can be heard 
in concerts of violins of hope. We welcome the Clarion Quartet to come to play for us today, and the Clarion Quartet includes Marta Krechowski, Jennifer Orchard, Tatiana Mead Seamus, Bronwyn Barn Barnard. Thank you. Hello, we're honored to be here to play for, for you. Uh, we will play the string quartet number three of Eric Korngold. He was exiled from Vienna, Austria at the beginning of the Holocaust. And he vowed while he was living in California, writing film music, to bring all the musicians he could to fill the orchestras for Hollywood, which he did. He then also vowed that he would not write any classical music as long as, as Hitler was in power, which he did not. This piece that we will play is the first classical piece that he wrote at the end of the Holocaust. We will play the beautiful slow movement as a symbol for hope. We will then play Boris Pigovat, an Israeli composer's arrangement of Cesarea Beach, which is from the poem of Hannah Shenesh and with the music of David Zahavi. Thank you.
Thank you to the Clarion Quartet. They've played a memorial concert every year for the last five years in one way or another. So thank you for that commitment. So Eric Olshin, our current U.S. Attorney for the Western District of Pennsylvania, will share his perspective on how to better understand the 11 wonderful people we remember today, their honor and their legacy, on behalf of our working group. Thank you for your team for helping to elevate the stories through the trial with dignity and respect. Thank you. I remember chesed, or loving kindness. Anthony Feinberg described his mother Joyce as the living embodiment of loving kindness. Joyce Feinberg engaged in loving kindness every day. She did it without being asked, not because she was supposed to or because it was somehow required. That's just who she was. I remember learning how Dan Stein honored his faith by reciting his Haftorah portion on the anniversary of his bar mitzvah every year for over 50 years. The children in his wife Sharon's daycare class loved Mr. Dan. He adored his children and grandson, and he was dedicated to donating blood with his good friend of many years, Irving Younger. I remember learning that Irv Younger was the son of a Holocaust survivor. He and his wife adopted two children and they fostered several more, treating each of those children just like their own. Whether it was picking up the tab or telling a joke, Irv loved making people happy. For Irv, it was clearly more important to him that he love than that he be loved. I remember learning that Jerry Benowitz was a country doctor who just happened to live in the city. He made house calls. In the height of the AIDS epidemic, he treated HIV and AIDS patients with compassion. Where others reacted with fear and indifference, he extended a hand or an embrace to these patients and he always did so with a smile on his face. Until the very end of his life, Jerry Rabinowitz cared about one thing most of all, helping. These things I'm telling you that so many gathered here today already know are things I learned over the past five years. I learned them in retrospect, when it was too late to know these amazing people in life. In my line of work, we engage in a particular kind of remembering. In a very real way, it is my job to facilitate remembering, to use the tools available to me to help make a permanent and public record of what happened at some point in history. And here, despite all of the trauma and the tears and the heartache and loss, I am grateful, I'm lucky, to have been part of this act of remembering. So that there is not just a record of how 11 lives were ended, but also an enduring record of how 11 lives were lived. So that is how I learned that Rose Malinger loved to dance. In fact, she loved to dance so much that when she was younger, she was somewhat of a wedding crasher, showing up at random weddings so she and her friends could sneak in and just dance. Rose was the center of every family dinner, and at 97 years old, she was the center of her whole family. For Sylvan and Bernice Simon, I learned it was love at first sight. They met on a blind date, they were married right in Pervin Chapel, and they were attached at the hip for over 60 years. They loved their children and their grandchildren. 
with Bernice and Sylvan, you never saw one without the other. Even if that meant that they were sitting in the car together before Shabbat services while Sylvan read the sports pages. Rich Godfrey loved sports too. I learned he was a diehard Pitt fan who liked watching football games almost as much as he liked critiquing the marching band's formation. He and his wife, Peg, were committed to helping others, often volunteering dental services to those without means. Rich truly lived by the motto, we're going to do this while we can. That's how he approached everything. I also learned about Mel Wax. He was a modest man with a kind heart. He never complained about anything. Even in his late 80s, Mel parked away from the synagogue so that other people could have the spots closer. When his grandson was sick, Mel was there every day. I'll never forget learning about how Mel Wax, who was hard of hearing, would tell jokes to Cecil Rosenthal, who, couldn't, who likely could not understand them. But somehow it worked, and they both had a great time. I learned so much about the boys, Cecil and David Rosenthal, both amazing both unique individual people. Where Cecil was social and generally the life of the party, the famous mayor of Squirrel Hill, David was more reserved. But despite his shyness, David was an expert trickster and he loved attending social events, whether it was a bar mitzvah, bat mitzvah, wedding, whatever. And of course, he loved his friends at the firehouse in the neighborhood. More than anything, I learned that Cecil and David loved their Jewish faith. All 11 of the beautiful people who were lost on October 27, 2018, shared a deep love and commitment to their faith. I am a better person because I have had the privilege of learning even just a little bit about those 11 people and for having been part of this five-year act of remembering them and their beautiful lives. But I am not alone. They have had a profound impact on the people I work with every day, as well as so many of our partners in law enforcement, and in fact, our whole courthouse community. Earlier this year, at a colleague's suggestion, I taped a piece of paper to the wall next to my desk with a collage of the 11, all smiling during happier times. It was the first thing I saw at my desk in the morning, and it was the last thing I saw when I got up to leave at the end of the day. It gave me comfort and strength. Now, when trials are over, you generally pack up all of the materials and you move them to storage. And I did that here, but not that piece of paper. Those 11 faces are still there because although one act of remembering ended in early August, there are other acts of remembering, big and small, that will go on for the rest of our lives. All of them powerful and important so I'll leave that piece of paper where it is, knowing that as a new chapter starts, the 11 and their memories will remain always. And what a blessing that is. In closing, I'd like to express my deepest gratitude to everyone who came here today to hold space of remembrance. Thank you for honoring us with your prayers, your songs, your spiritual reflections and words. Though you see me standing here, the commemoration is truly planned by a working group from the community. 
Many of the community members have volunteered their time now every year, and I'm so grateful. I'd like to thank Carol Black, Barb Kaplan, Brian Schreiber, Lulu Orr, Kara Spodek, Alan Hausman, John Pashinsky, Eric Legey, Carly Parker, and Jules Malice for all of your work. 1027, yeah, thanks. <laughs> 1027 Healing Partnership is only a sum of all the parts of our community, all of the people who brought their voices and perspectives to shape our com commandment and choice to remember. As our middle school ambassadors make their way to send us out into our evening, our time to honor the Sabbath, I'd also like to acknowledge the efforts of the Community Day School, Greenfield Elementary, Kentucky Avenue School, Sterrett Classical Academy, Hillel Academy, St. Edmunds Academy, and Sunnyside Elementary for being part of this five-year commemoration. Thank you to all who give of themselves to build a community that shows that there's far more good in this world and helps shape the understanding of carrying the memories of the 11 wonderful people forward in community. Thank you for being in solidarity. It's only when we work together that we can create a society that has no space for hate or identity-based violence. So look at each other on your way out, see each other, and find our shared humanity. Thank you very much.